Hello and welcome to Bloomberg News. I have with me Mr. P.C. Modi, Chairman of Central Board of Direct Taxes, and Mr. John Joseph, Central Board, Chairman of Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to Bloomberg News. Um, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Modi. Um, you have budgeted numbers in double digits in terms of the direct tax increases. Um, Past year, we haven't seen those numbers, uh, you know, coming close to the target. Is there a question of credibility here in terms of revenue projections, especially at a time when we are, you know, in a slow growth environment? No, let me let me answer it in this manner: that uh, whatever uh, uh, realistic assessment was to be made, it has been made. And it's not that uh, the uh, figures, they had a certain basis earlier also. Uh, but we are optimistic of meeting the revenue targets uh, for two reasons. One, the, we, now we have the realistic estimates with us. Two, the manner in which the compliance is uh, increasing day by day. We have uh, put in place a mechanism of uh, getting the financial information about the taxpayers from different reporting entities and uh, that very information we propose to put it uh, or make it available to the taxpayers on their portal just like 26 AS. That is one part of it. Two, we are also increased our uh, due diligence or uh, sharing of information with uh, say maybe CBIC and vice versa. So both ways it benefits. And the underlying uh, uh, theme of the entire exercise is that the voluntary compliant taxpayer should get all the opportunities to come clean and pay his taxes properly. Okay. And the delinquent one uh, needs to be tackled as per law. <laughs> this is just coming to you. I mean, a, a large part of this budget has been, you know, using taxes to protect domestic manufacturing. I mean, there have been across duty changes which sort of, you know, take us that down that road. But that road also talks, uh, you know, comes with the fact that you might be isolated, isolated, or, you know, you're protective in terms of trade, by you're putting up, you know, sort of protecting trade, your uh, trade, or your industry. Um, is that a fair assessment or is it the need of the art? But I think your assessment may not be, I mean, I don't say it is tightly, right, rightly on the mark, it's tightly off the mark if I can say that one. Because the idea of the entire taxation is not that to increase inefficiency in our system. Basically, if you look at the products that we have increased the duty, they are all manufactured well here and we are good exporters of that. So if thinking that, okay, because we need to then, we need to protect them in a calibrated way. It's not that, okay, some duties have been reduced from 10 to 100, 10 to 80. It's not like, nothing like that. Only. A very calibrated approach has been taken so that both the efficiency of the system must be maintained and any dumping or similar sort of a thing, subsidized import coming from other countries need to be cut tailed also. So that both, it is a win-win situation for all. Industry improves their performance. Secondly, the consumer in this country also gets the benefit and the government gets the revenue in the bargain. Before coming to you, uh, income tax reject. Um, I mean, it seems like a welcome move. Uh, people are expecting some sort of a relief after uh, the corporate tax payer got a relief last year. But it now ends up with two systems of taxation for the personal ta personal income tax payer. Also, it seems that there are too many slabs there. Is it a complicated system? No. On the contrary, it is a preferred system. Uh, there was a lot of uh, expectation and a kind of a demand uh, to have reduced uh, tax rates so far as personal income tax is concerned. So we have gone about and uh, done those uh, changes in the personal income tax. Multiple slabs also has to be viewed in the context of uh, that people, earlier you had say a straight jump from 5% to 20%. In between there was no slab. With these introduction of three more additional slabs, what would happen is, what we expect is that a person in the lower bracket, if he wants to move to the higher bracket, the tax incidence is minimal. So there would be a natural motivation from moving from one slab to the other. And earlier what would happen is, because of the huge gap in the slab, there would be a tendency to kind of under-report or misreport the income that would go away with this. Two, 
it definitely is beneficial because it leaves more money with the hands of the taxpayers. Okay. So to that extent, uh, I think this rationalization was much needed. I mean, there's, there's also some, some talk that, you know, these removing all income tax exemptions may prompt millennials from buying homes. Is that is that an exaggerated scenario picture? Uh, no, I don't think it would uh, lead to that kind of a situation. On the contrary, they should be happy. The millennials would rather be happy paying lower taxes and not availing any deduction or exemption. <laughs> so more, more, more money in the hands of the taxpayer. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Joseph, um, uh, you know, uh, last year there was this dispute resolution that, that uh, your department had started and it's now coming down to DCBDT also. It's been a pleasant uh, experience, the entire process? Yeah, it has been a wonderful experience. The basic idea of coming with that program was, we, you, as you know, very well know, central excise and service tax is almost gone. Except for a few items, we have uh, GST has taken over the entire things. So, uh, idea was to see that okay, all these legacy disputes should be solved because that will give industry. I mean, they should be able to do their work, and the department should be able to do their own work. And whomsoever is the complaint person, I mean, say, anybody could have committed mistake. We said okay, forget and forgive. So, that was the basic issue thrust behind the entire program, and it is I mean, say, quite a great success if, I, if you can ask me. Almost 90% of the people have come into that one, and they are joined. And uh, we will be getting almost, we expect to get around 15,000 crores out of that one. And there's a substantial amount that is coming in also. It, is, it has also to be viewed in the Some context. Some experience from there. In not case. only not only that, of course, each each case study is a learning experience. But uh, otherwise, the stated policy of the government is to uh, reduce litigation. And. If we are saddled with almost 4,80,000 cases at different appellate uh, forums, we want to give a chance to the taxpayer to settle his disputes because after all litigation is also a costly affair. If he can settle his dispute uh, well in time, so much the better for the taxpayers, also for the tax administration. So both ways it works fine. Okay. Point taken. Um, Mr. Joseph, uh, coming to a specific point, the Renewable Energy Ministry had asked for a basic custom duty on solar cells. Yes, um, is, there, is there any proposal? I mean, is, is there anything in the fine print that we should look at? No, we should, you can't think about it. I mean, we may have to impose it later on, but the problem is that, okay, as you very well know, there are certain IT items on which we will not be in a position to do that one because the importer or the exporter may take us to the, the exporting country can take us to the World Trade Organization for that matter. Okay. So we will have to do a very conscious decision if you want to do something on that one and it has to be legally compliant also. And what happens to projects or you know projects which are already implemented where there is a import element? Will it be grandfathered? I mean, will it, will it be a prospective thing or no. even if it's prospective, uh. what about people who have already won projects in, in yeah, the process? So the MNR is also supposed to give us a proposal on that one. They are also, I mean, so keeping the proposal, they said, okay, they will be coming back to us with the detailed proposal based on which we will take a call. It's not that we may be fully agreeing with them, but we will also, when we take a call, we will be taking all the concerns also. That is the basic idea of doing it all. Okay. On that note, thank you, sir. Thank you.